So metaphorically speaking, on today's show, we're going to Corvallis because there's a quarterback development over there that, shall we say, has my attention. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pack 12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and your number one source to stay up to date with our media rights free and beloved conference of champions. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show. We're trying to get to 3,000 by the time the season starts. We are on the way. Continue to hit subscribe so you can know when we got new shows. And we've got my man Carter Baines here. He writes for 24-7 Sports. He's a part of Beaver Blitz. He is our Oregon State guy here at Locked On Pack 12 And Carter, I got to tell you, I am all aboard. Choo-choo! Metaphorically, of course, the uh, Aiden Childs hype train. That is until my alter ego comes out on a later podcast episode. But I, I, I watched Aiden Childs play in that spring game, and my reaction was, I haven't seen an Oregon State quarterback look like that in, I, I honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. What did you think of him? Yeah, he had probably the two top highlight plays of the day, right? When you think about, uh, he had that play where he rolled out to the right, escaped the pocket, um, you know, got away from a couple of potential would-be sackers, uh, and then threw to a diving receiver on the run. And then another one where he kind of rolls out, takes a couple steps back, uh, and then fires like a 30, 35 yard bomb to the back of the end zone to Silas Bolden for a touchdown. So I, I think the two most impressive plays of the spring game went to the 17 year old quarterback who frankly is is taking this competition by storm. I, I mean, we're going to get super in depth with all of these guys, but you know, I, I, I don't think off the top, I would say Aiden Childs is a favorite to be your starter at Oregon state this fall, but like we have to have this conversation now because he has fully entered himself into that mix with a really, really impressive spring. You know, one thing that young players can sometimes uh, struggle with optically for for fans and media people who who watch these guys play, especially early in their careers, is they don't look like they're quite ready. You know, they, they're out there and they've got a jitteriness to them or they don't have the size. They don't quite have the speed. They need to put on some pounds. They need to, you know, just get comfortable at the college level. I was so impressed with Childs because he went right out there and made, made some mistakes for sure. And I'll have you break down his performance in, in detail here in a moment, but overall Carter, I was so impressed because he made some spectacular plays, but he just looked like he belonged out there like you you watched him play quarterback and thought yeah that's a power five quarterback right there size mobility twitchiness fluidity arm talent I think he has the tools to do everything you want in in that Oregon State offense or a lot of offenses frankly he looks comfortable there's no doubt I mean you know, it, you, you don't see the the happy feet, the jitteriness, like you said, with him that you do with a lot of freshman quarterbacks. And, um, you know, I, I think that goes a long way in somebody's ability to play very early in their career, because obviously he still has to learn the playbook and whatnot. But if the speed of the game isn't bothering you right away, that's a really good sign for your ability to do that, to pick up the playbook and to implement it on the field physically. I do think Childs could benefit from putting on some pounds, and I'm sure he will do that this summer. I mean, mind you, again, like I said, this is a 17-year-old, basically, you know, still a high school senior who enrolled early, just got here in time for spring camp, um, so hasn't really had a whole lot of time to work with Oregon State's training staff. I'm sure as he does that throughout the summer, he's going to put on a few pounds, add some good weight, uh, bulk up a little bit, and I think that's necessary if he is going to sustain hits this fall if he plays. You know, he's he's a dual threat guy. He's, I mean, a, a pass first player, but um, he has some wheels. He's not afraid uh, to carry the ball. You know, Oregon State will run some read option with him, some RPOs, I'm sure. 
Um, but I would like to see him add a little bit of weight before he takes the field this season. Um, but the height, the arm talent, the, you know, the, the strength as far as putting the ball down field, um, he has all of that. I mean, he's all of 6'4", um, looks the part, uh, again, like you said, just in, in, in the confidence uh, and, and the physicality aspects, which is huge for a true freshman. I really wonder if one day we won't look back and say he was one of those under-recruited quarterbacks that a school in the Pacific Northwest was able to find, you you know, whether it's uh, Michael Penix in the portal coming from Indiana. There weren't a lot of big schools going after him, but Kalen DeBoer said, that's my guy, makes the most out of him. Justin Herbert, only power five offer, I'm pretty sure, was from Oregon. That career worked out pretty darn well. Childs was, I mean, he's a three-star quarterback coming out. It's not like he's you know, a, a preferred walk on. Oh, was he a four? Did he? Okay. So he did. Get yeah. Up there. So he did get up there a little bit. 24 seven sports did bump him to um, high four star status at the end of the cycle. So he was, I believe the second highest quarterback who was not a five star. So um, gotcha. with his okay. performance at the all American bowl and um, you know, with our recruiting analysts being able to get some more eyes on him later in the season, um, he really popped because this is a guy who in high school didn't even play a full high school season until his senior year. So that I think is why he flew under the radar so much. Oregon state was on him very early. Uh, he committed extremely early in that cycle. He was one of Oregon state's first commits, um, back over a year ago now at this point. Um, so Oregon state being on the early side got to him before he popped before other schools took notice. And I mean, he was locked in with the Beavers ever since. Yeah, I think that's big to keep him committed, especially in today's world of flip, flipping recruits and switching commitments and schools coming after the guys who say they're going to your school. I think that's a, a testament to what Oregon State has done the, the last uh, several years. What did you see from him in the spring game? What were maybe two things, uh, aside from the explosive plays that stood out, and two things that you looked at and said, okay, I feel like he can improve on this front? Yeah, obviously I mentioned the big plays, um, but I think – the one thing that's immediately noticeable with Childs that, like you said, we haven't seen at Oregon State in a long time, maybe ever, is the ability to escape the pocket, make throws on the run. Uh, I mean, when you think about the Oregon State all-time great quarterbacks, you're talking Derek Anderson, you know, Sean Mannion, uh, Matt Moore, none of these guys were like the dual threats that you know you saw 45 miles to the south you know um marcus mariota justin herbert to an extent um aiden so child jeremiah Masoli, darren thomas yeah, has been sure. just a slew of mobile quarterbacks and oregon sure, state to your point, has been the opposite consistently yeah oregon state more of a, a pocket passer school than jonathan smith too comes to mind obviously but aiden childs like I said, even though he's one of those, you know, looking to pass first type quarterbacks, which I mean, obviously it's what you want from your quarterback. You want him to be able to throw the ball. Um, but I guess the point is he's not going to rely on his legs. You know, he he has immense amounts of arm talent. He just also happens to be really mobile around the pocket and can get into the open field and make guys miss once he's out there. So I think too often at Oregon state over the last, you know, 20 years of, of Oregon state's relevance in football. Um, you know, you see really talented quarterbacks, but you see them go down the second they're even, you know, uh, uh, the second a linebacker breathes on them. Aiden Giles is, is the complete opposite. He'll make those guys miss and make plays on the run. So I think that stood out to me in, in, in the spring game. I think you saw that quite a bit, but on the flip side, as with any true freshman, as with any newcomer in any system, um, a, a few head scratching throws. You know, there was one where he made a really nice throw, and then on the very next play, overthrew a receiver in the end zone by about seven yards. So, you know, it's you you, you get a little bit of both. It's it's going to be 50 50 for a while until he gets really comfort uh, really comfortable and and confident in the system, but. I mean, again, you, you see the raw talent there, so you imagine that's going to come before long. Well, he he's all the buzz in the quarterback front in Corvallis right now. He wasn't supposed to be, though, or he wasn't 
until he popped in the spring game, which is telling. And we'll talk about that after we talk about how great built bars are. Look, Aiden Childs, according to Carter, needs to put on some weight. Built bars might be a good way to do that to keep him going. They are a delicious snack without all the sugar and calories. They're healthy. They taste amazing. They're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they've got a bunch of amazing flavors. Mint brownie is my favorite, but they've got a bunch of other great ones as well. Churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream, only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, a whopping 17 grams of protein. It's why they're always in my pantry, and I always have one in my golf bag as well if I need something to keep me going out on the links you can go to walmart and get your latest order walk over to the pharmacy pharmacy section pick up a four bar box of cookies and cream double chocolate coconut puff whatever tickles your fancy fancy really or if you're close to a sam's club run in and grab a 13 bar box with our hit flavors brownie batter puff and churro puff you can thank me later you can also check out specialty flavors at built.com so walmart sam's club built.com go get your next order of built bars today and thank me later all right, so I, I didn't imagine when DJ Uyunglele transferred to Oregon State in, what was it, December, I believe it was? Right before Christmas. When that got announced, what if you had tried to, you know, right now, gone in a time machine back to that day and said, hey, he's not going to be the most talked about quarterback after the spring game. I would have looked at you like you were cross-eyed and just been hit upside the head and were dazed and confused and whatnot. But here we are, Childs was stealing all the headlines and such. And meanwhile, DJU is just kind of operating in the shadows, it seems, compared to you know the shiny veneer of, of the new toy that Oregon State might have at quarterback there. But DJU still widely expected, I assume, to be the starter for Oregon State this year. How did he look in his first public appearance in a Bees uniform? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, Oregon State very, very quietly now, it seems like, has the former number two quarterback recruit in the country on its roster, and nobody's talking about him anymore because <laughs> they've got a true freshman. Who, he's old news. Sure, he hasn't taken a real snap yet, but he's yesterday's news. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, which I think is, I, I mean, obviously it's going to happen in spring camp. It's it's all about, you know, finding those those young guys who who pop and whatnot. Look, I, I don't think it's any knock against DJ that we're not talking about him a whole lot. I, I think he's he's just a solid quarterback who's going to fit in that system really well. And in the spring game, you didn't see a whole lot of him because he only, you know, I mean, he only had one drive of action before they shut him down, which I think is telling of what they think. You know, if if you're only going to put a guy out there for for one drive, I mean, you do that with the guy that you think is going to be your starter in the fall. Um you know, the guys that you want to limit reps for so that they don't get hurt or that you don't need to see a whole lot from. Now, is that is that the right decision? Should they have a more open mind about it? I mean, I, I don't know. We can debate that. But I think it's very clear when you watch those guys on the practice field and from what I saw in spring camp and what Beaver Blitz has reported, I, I mean, DJ looks the part of a quarterback who's going to come in right away and lead this offense. Physically, just... I mean, a, a step ahead of every quarterback on the roster and frankly, most quarterbacks in college football. I mean, this guy is absolutely huge. He's built to sustain hits. Uh, he is just an absolute cannon of an arm. And I think, again, like with Childs, you see all of those physical traits. You see him make these impressive passes in practice. But every now and then there's a, a throw that makes you think, well, what did he see there or or, or what was that about? And at Clemson, that was kind of the problem. You know, there was a little bit of inconsistency there. And and that's why the, the Clemson fans, I think, were so low on him at the end of his career there. Um, but I chalk that up more at Oregon State to just, I mean, this is a guy who only has a month of practice in the system. Um, and it's a system that I think is, is more tailored to his skills. And that's exactly, I mean, he said as much. He said that's why he came to Oregon State. He looked at that scheme, did a bunch of research on it, watched a bunch of film and said, that's a system I can go thrive in. They're going to call plays that suit me, unlike Clemson did. Um, so I think that's the exciting part about what DJ brings this fall that we probably haven't quite seen yet. Is, is there any chance at all that Aiden Childs pushes DJU, you think, in 2023 for the starting quarterback job? I'd I'd hesitate to say yes on that. 
Okay. Um, just because, and I'll put it this way, Ben Golbranson's still in the quarterback room, and as long as he's there, Jonathan Smith and Brian Lindgren are going to give him a little bit of a benefit just because of what he did last year and the fact that in today's day and age, if you have a veteran guy who has playing experience and who has won games and you are giving him uh, effectively you know, fewer reps than a true freshman in, in fall camp, he's probably going to be in the transfer portal in the matter of a few weeks or months. So... You know, I think to an extent that was what you saw in in the spring. You'll probably continue to see that in fall camp. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, by the end of fall camp, does Aiden Childs maybe take more second team reps? I don't know. Um, but Aiden Childs was pretty strictly a third team quarterback in the spring. And I, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see that continue into the fall. And, you know, that's OK, because. I, I think it would take a, a, a very, very I think it would take a spectacular next few months from Aiden Childs to uproot dj from this job um and that's kind of what we expected right like when when these guys came in we expected dj to be the starter for a year you know potentially go pro after that and then you hand the keys to childs after a year of development and so at the very least that's probably still what you're getting now if dj struggles then you have the conversation. Do you go to your veteran who has, you know, kind of a, a low ceiling but high floor, or do you hand the keys to the offense to this this freshman and see what he brings you? That's the the scenario that I'm really interested in because I do think, you know, obviously based off of the struggles that DJ had at Clemson, yeah, there is obviously a chance that he struggles like that at Oregon State too. What do the Beavers do then? I think that that conversation is going to be heightened in 2023, but I tend to be with you that DJU will probably have a sufficiently long leash to allow him to make some mistakes, go through rough patches if if, if that happens. But I, I feel like with the way Childs has generated buzz, at least in the fan and media community, the intensity of the calls for Childs to be out there, you know, you, you know there will always be people on Twitter. DJU throws a pick in – you know, their, their first game of the season, it'll be, all right, get him out of there. It's time for Aiden Childs, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, like there'll be fans who, who, who will react that way. But going into 2024, correct me if I'm wrong, but DJU's got two years of eligibility if he wants to use them. I don't he think does. he's a high-level high, high level NFL draft prospect at this point in time. So I feel like the battle going into 2024, if DJU were to come back, I think that's where you, you'd see a more open competition and, and Childs would probably have a better chance, yeah? I completely agree there. Yeah, because, I mean, let's be honest, if DJ doesn't perform at a level that gets him some looks in the NFL this year, Childs might just be the better quarterback next year anyway. So, I mean, I think that is where your your real competition lies. It's how does DJ look after one year in the system that he claims is, you know, going to unlock parts of of his game and that we think will do that. Um, You know, that's that will be one to watch. Obviously, Oregon State hopes, yeah, DJ goes out, balls out, has a great year. The physical tools match up with the production. He goes pro, and then you've got your quarterback lined up in Childs. But, I mean, again, we we won't know until this fall. Let's uh, talk about the non-quarterbacks here from uh, the spring game. And last year, you, you made quite the call on this very podcast when I asked you, to highlight three players who earned playing time in the spring game. And one of the guys you, uh, you know, included in your trio was who, oh yeah, Damian Martinez, the Pac-12 offensive freshman of the year. That turned out to be a pretty good pick. So are, are you willing to risk putting your reputation on the line like that again after setting the bar just way too high in, in year one? I mean, I'm not going to live up to that. There's no way because Damian Martinez was the Pac-12 freshman, offensive freshman of the year. Like, literally, I would have to pick like a Pac-12 MVP, um, and I, I just don't think you're going to see anybody uh, perform at that level that in this newcomer class. So, not with that I don't attitude. know if I can stake my reputation <laughs> to it, but I could give you a I could give you a guess of somebody who might pop. All right. Let, well, let's let, let's go through it here. Three guys that can be offense, defense, or some mixture of uh, uh of the two sides of the ball. Heck, it could be a special team or teams guy if 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 you want it to be. Whatever floats you boat there, Carter. Three guys that you saw in that spring game that you think will play more in the fall because of how they played in the spring game. I mean, I'm gonna have to use all of spring camp here as as yeah. Kind I think of that's the... that's probably the best way to do it. 
Yeah, it, just because there were so many guys held out from the spring game and the, some of the starters only got a few reps. But the first one here, I'll start with offensive side. I, I'm going to give one from the offense, two from the defense. The offensive guy is wide receiver Zachary Card, who is basically the second coming of Anthony Gould, I think. Anthony Gould, mind you, an All-American punt returner last year who also happens to be a very good wide receiver. I think Gould will be Oregon State's leading receiver this year, maybe Silas Bolden. Um, but I think Zachary Card is hes as good of an athlete and maybe already as good of a pass catcher. Um, and that's pretty impressive from a true freshman. Uh, comes from a, a group of true freshman wide receivers. There's three or four of them who I think could contribute right away. Um, but Card's the leader there. He's hes the only one who was healthy in spring camp. And um, he, looked, he looked really, really good. He was one of the quarterback's top targets. On the defensive side, I'll go to the defensive backfield with Tyrese Ivey, who's a, a, a junior college transfer who came in right before camp. Um, and, you know, his role is frankly, very important on a team that lost a ton of contributors from a group that was really, really good last year. I mean, Rajon Wright, Alex Austin are gone. Jaden Grant's gone. Um, and so they're, they have to replace a lot at corner and at nickel. And I think Tyrese Ivey um, really took advantage of that in the spring. Um, this is a guy who, who probably could slash will start uh, at corner day one, much like Ryan Cooper did last year as a junior college transfer himself, ended up leading the team in interceptions. So um, Tyrese Ivey, I think, kind of fits in that same mold there. And with Skylar Thomas, uh, who was a projected starting quarterback, um, tearing his ACL in, in spring camp, Ivey's role is, is even more important. Um, and then I'll round it out on the defensive line with some combination of Kelsey Howard and Thomas Collins. Uh, Kelsey Howard was a four-star commit, and uh, Thomas Collins is actually an international prospect from Sweden. One of those two, I think, will crack the rotation. And I mean, man, these guys are these guys are physical specimens as true freshmen. Um, you know, they they popped in the spring game, and shoot, I'll even throw Takari Hickel in there too. I think one of those three um, very young defensive linemen can make an impact in a group that is continuing to develop, but still is, is probably one of Oregon state's weaker positions. So, so I want to ask you about Howard real quick, because from a recruiting standpoint, that was the sort of guy that when he committed, I talked about here on the show, you, you know, not just the the upside that, that he presents, but it was kind of like, Whoa, or, Oregon state's getting that guy like out of, out of the Las Vegas area. Right. And he's a four-star recruit. And he's on the defensive line. Like, since, since when does Oregon state get those kind of guys? Like it, it was, it was a bit of a head turner in, in that sense. What are the early reports uh, saying on him and how he might fit into the defense? Yeah, I mean, the physicality is there. The, the, the guy is huge, uh, plays with a, a ton of confidence, um, and, and got quite a bit of run in the spring. Um, again, somebody who I think is is probably on the two deep as a true freshman. Um, and, and again, the same goes for Thomas Collins, same goes for Takari Hickel, who spent a year in the system to develop. But, I mean, Kelsey Howard, like you said, kind of set this new standard for Oregon State recruiting. He and Aiden Childs um, were kind of those breakthrough commits for Jonathan Smith. Um, and if you could get, you know, one of Kelsey Howard and Aiden Childs on the field as true freshmen, that's, I mean, that's a major win. But um, I, I see Howard being one of Oregon State's top defensive players within probably a year or two. I mean, he has that kind of potential and um, he already performed, you know, pretty well uh, in, in his first spring camp. All righty. Well, Carter Baines writes for 24-7 Sports on the National Desk. He does some coverage for Beaver Blitz as well. He's our Oregon State guy. Carter, great to have you back on the show. Thanks so much. Thanks, Spencer. Appreciate everyone listening. Have a great weekend. And until next time, have a wonderful rest of your day.